Oh, uh, hey. Wasn't expecting to see you here. Uh, Thomas. And you are? I'm Jack. But Thomas, you should really it's go. It's so great to finally meet That's you. That's great. But like, Thomas, you're five hours early. What? Okay, then I better get going. Got a lot of jobs to do. How am I early by five hours? Driver, did you freaking set the clocks wrong or something? How am I? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. See you, Jack. Bye. All right. See you, Thomas. Bro, who is early by five hours? Jack in the Pack was the shining light in a bad era. It's no secret that Thomas was declining ever since Britt was no longer involved. When he took over, it went downhill way faster, though. Season 8 was at best mid, season 9 was bad, and by season 10, everyone knew that this franchise was a shell of its former self. But in 2006, Thomas fans got DVDs that featured the pack in season 6. This must have been a blessing to those who are watching the show. Finally, a classic Tom season had decided to dig itself out of the grave and give us, with its dying breath, Jack in the Sodor Construction Company? Hold on. Ah, oh, there we go. Jack in the Pack. Thomas fans threw, like, parties and celebrated and then moved on because the Great Discovery dropped. At least that's what I'm guessing happened because I wasn't even alive. The pack is beloved by many, including myself, and I figured why don't I take a look at the pack throughout the entire show and see how they evolved with it. Oh boy, I sure do enjoy helping out. Oh crap, oh sh- Season 6 of Thomas was a downgrade for sure. It doesn't feel as classic as those first five seasons, and the whole thing lacked the quality that the first five had. But it's still a fun and good enough season, and one of the biggest standouts has to be Jack in the Pack. Getting to see a new aspect of Sodor is really cool. These machines have so many moving parts, like how could you not love these? They're amazing to watch and it fits Sodor perfectly. The episodes are also good introduction episodes to the pack and Jack. It is really well done. Jack is the newest member to join the pack. He gets to meet everyone working there and he's so eager to help that he does all of his job for him. And before anyone can stop him, he's already off delivery kit. But he ends up falling over and since he wasn't listening, Miss Jenny thinks that he might not be ready to join the pack yet. But Jack left a good impression on everyone. He's nice and he's so excited to help out but he needs to learn patience. Jack is a great introduction to what the pack is. He's brand new, the audience is brand new to this. It's something that's been done a whole lot, but it still works really well in this. I also like this little relationship with Thomas he has. It's kind of nice, even though the first introduction to this series is a very creepy Thomas face. The pack, I feel, wouldn't be interesting without some character drama. And Max without Monty is everything Jack is not. He's rude, and the first time they meet, Max without Monty tries to intimidate him. And when Jack isn't affected, he brushes it off as him not being able to take a joke. The next day, Jack is following all the rules and doing great. He almost makes the same mistake by doing Oliver's job again, but he stops him and lets him do his work. Oliver probably thinks this is Jack trying to do all of his jobs, but the pack congratulates Jack for not making the same mistake twice. But Jack is worried that Miss Jenny still won't let him stay at the pack. But then Ned doesn't pull a shovel down all the way and a bridge starts to collapse. But Thomas is on his way. Jack thinks quickly and saves Thomas from an accident. Due to his bravery, Miss Jenny has him sent to the fitters and wants him to stay in the pack. I absolutely love these episodes. They're really nice feel-good episodes with a lot of potential if it was expanded on. It was really cool to see a brand new part of the island, and it must have been weird for some time having these two random episodes to just never use these models again. But thankfully we got Jack in the pack, and honestly, it expands on everything that it needed to. I sure do love being inside a building with no threat. Alright, take it down, Oliver. You got it. Hey, what's that? <laughs> in the hit era, getting classic series DLC is really cool. I'm glad they realized that they would get like tons more money by letting these episodes be made and released and not getting cancelled to focus on their current rebrand of the show. Yeah, we got half the season cut and the titles changed and Thomas and Percy having to be in every episode, but those are really easy to look past. Jack and the Sodor Construction Company, gross, is kind of a perfect first season. Jack already got his introduction in the pilot. So the episodes are focused on the other members. We get Oliver, who's very kind and polite, but has a little bit of an ego. Ned, who is kind of the idiot type character, but he's kind. Alfie, who like Jack is young, and I don't really like this part of his character. Alfie is self-conscious about being small, which I mean, just cause I don't like it doesn't mean it's not a bad flaw to have. I don't know, I just, I guess I was burnt out by those plots. Kelly, who gonna be real, kinda doesn't get too much characterization. First episode we get with Kelly that's a spotlight is Kelly's Windy Day. 
and it's not a great introduction to the character. It's still enjoyable. I think he's supposed to be like Edward, but I really couldn't tell. Max with Monty are just the two jerks who make the show really entertaining. And Buster is very optimistic and also very underused because he's not that versatile, but that's kind of the point to his character. And he gets two episodes to himself about that, which I thought was cool. Byron, who is really just chill and wants validation, and Isabella, who is kind of like Kelly, will do anything to help the pack. Those are the main members of the pack. I would say like Nelson and Patrick are fun, but they didn't feel like they would be main characters and would eventually stop showing up as time went on, which is what happened. But for those main pack members, they have a lot going for them. They are so strong with their characterization. You can tell when Britt left, the characterization for the main cast was really off, but when writing the pack, they had a lot of fun with this and it was all really well put together. But the main appeal has to be seeing these locomotives with so many moving parts just doing their jobs. The models are so impressive, and all the sets as well. It's truly beautiful and adds to the feel of the show. Even though it's made by a hit, visually, it doesn't feel like every hit season they made. I found myself enjoying the score too. It's really fitting. I might miss Mike O'Donnell and Junior Kimbell, but honestly, I can't really imagine them doing a score for this season because of how well it was done here. The reason why people just love the pack is because it's so many enjoyable characters interacting with well-written episodes in really cool machinery just doing its thing. It's really fun, it's a fun miniseries, I love all the character interactions, but this isn't really about a review of the pack series itself, it's more of a look about all the characters and how they were used later on in the show. So as much as I would love to go on about this and make a whole video about it, which I might one day, uh, let's focus on the pack's usage in the hit era. Whew. That took a long time, but we finally finished Great Water Deep. No! The pack wouldn't be used in the hit era until the Great Discovery. We didn't get the entire pack returning. Like Kelly, Isabella, Nelson, and Patrick didn't return for the movie, and their last appearances would be in the pack spinoff. In the Great Discovery, they play a pretty important role. Topham calls Miss Jenny and tells her that they found Great Water Tin and need their help to rebuild it. They of course end up helping. They do a lot of work in the Jobs of Plenty music video, and Jack and Thomas even get to have a nice conversation for the first time in a while. Jack has taken on a manager role in the film, something that isn't at all what his character was like in the show. He's telling Max and Monty to work harder, and the pack is referred to as Jack and his team. I don't mind this characterization of Jack. It's not accurate, but it's still enjoyable to watch, honestly. They are a cause of Thomas not feeling important, and they even look for Thomas when he's missing. The role they play in the movie is actually really fun. It's a great way to keep them in the show, and it's really fun getting to see the pack celebrate the work they've accomplished at the end of the movie. For their appearances in the hit era, they weren't that bad. Like, the great discovery as their only appearance? Like, how could we ask for a better send-off of these characters? Like, yeah, Jack was weird- oh, wait, yeah, um, they appeared in season 12, I forgot. They show up in season 12 for a single episode. It's in Percy and the Bandstand, which means I get another reason to revisit the GOAT, Mr. Arkwright! The episode just has Jack, Alfie, and Max without Monty. Max without Monty doesn't get a CGI face, Alfie doesn't speak, and Jack just says, thank you, Bert. But this episode does something I find to be awful, and that is this Miss Jenny redesign. Like, this sucks! Why did they make her wear yellow and black? And what, also, like, why did they make her super thin? Like, Miss Jenny isn't supposed to be, like, this thin. Her design before was honestly kind of perfect. It's something you would expect for someone who would work at a pack. Now she's just this ugly, nothing design that missed the point of the original. That just annoys me, but this would be Jack and Alfie's first experience with CGI. But after this, we wouldn't get any of the pack members for five years. I wonder what the future's like. Hey. Ew. I'm what you become. Ew, why? What? The first character they brought back after Mattel bought Thomas was Jack. Honestly, they did him really well, character-wise. Design-wise, he is really, really bad. But character-wise, he's back to being like he was in Jack in the Pack. He's working hard and is nice to Thomas. I like how Thomas calls out to him with this being the first time he's seen Jack in probably forever. He even helps get rid of the rocks that trapped Steven in the mine and helps save him from the collapsing bridge. 
He was a little slow to actually go over and help him, but I think it's probably just because he's gotten slower with age. He wouldn't be in season 17 or 18, instead he made a brief cameo helping out on the site in the other side of the mountain. But looking back on it, they were just waiting until everyone was familiar with writing for the show because they brought the pack back for Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. Would it be a hot take to say that Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure is the best appearance of the pack since their original show? For Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure, they first show Jack, covering his face from the rubble, and you're thinking, oh cool, it's Jack. And then they cut to the next shot and the narrator just says, Jack and Alfie from the Soto Construction Company are part of the team too. I hadn't watched this movie in two years, but I was genuinely so shocked that they mentioned the Soto Construction Company in this movie. Then we get to see Oliver, and I think the complaints about Jack's design were heard because Alfie and Oliver look spot on. I haven't looked into their differences, but they at least look the part. Max and Monty are also in this movie. Their designs are a little off, but honestly they look good enough, and they don't get too much attention in this movie, and they are instead just background characters. Probably for the best because a plot with them being jerks wouldn't really work that well in this movie. We get a nice joke with this movie, and it's with Marion. She talks to Oliver, but thinks he's the same as the Oliver the Engine, and the small engines gave him a wish, and now he's an excavator. He doesn't even get a chance to tell her that, and he just ends up dealing with it the whole movie. At the end, when Oliver meets Oliver, and Marion learns that there are two of them, it's a nice way to end the joke, and it was really funny to see Oliver the excavator having to deal with Marion the whole time. For characterization, I think everyone's done really well. Jack is not that focused on, but it's the same as he was in King the Railway. Alfie doesn't get that much focus either, and I think he was really underutilized. He and Oliver are seen together, which I actually really liked. It's less of a mentor thing going on and more of a pairing. Oliver, I think, was done the worst. He's still really accurate, he's kind of polite, but he's missing his confidence and his ego. I kind of get the impression he's a little more scared. I do like him enough still, but I feel they should have leaned more into his confidence sometimes. But besides Oliver, like, pretty much everything is done pretty well. I wish we got more of the pack to return, like Kelly or Isabella, but for what we got, I like it. We would later see the pack in season 20. In Mucking About, it's all focused on Max and Monty. Thomas likes to race them, and like usual, they are just causing trouble. They hit Jack in a hole, and they go away when they are needed, and Max and Monty both get along with each other a lot here. They still have a little of their argumentative side, but I like how they are both doing all of this stuff together. Then they accidentally have a rock hit Oliver, and he has to go get it repaired. Max gets the idea to dump their loads off a bridge to get the work done faster, but they dumped it on a line which leads to Thomas crashing and then Oliver, once fixed, is sent to help clear the line. Topham and a police officer catch them in the act, and it's really satisfying seeing them get into trouble for illegal dumping. Of course, they go back to their old ways immediately because it's Max and Monty, and they won't change. This is the only episode that really focused on the pack Everyone was done so well, and Davey Moore really did a great job. In season 21, we would get Oliver, Max, and Monty in the fastest red engine on Sodor to help clean up James's crash, and in Shed for Edward, we see Max without Monty helping clean up the rubble. And that is every CGI Jack in the pack appearance before Bubba. They weren't a big focus, but I think for what we got in this era, it was a pretty good continuation. Now they were very underused, and I would have loved to see more episodes with the pack, but I'll take the quality over quantity we got with them. Who are you? I'm Brenda. Yeah, that doesn't help me. We first see Jack in season 22 in School of Death. He's helping clean up the rubble from the school. Then in season 23, we get Free the Roads. Max and Monty are blocking the road, which causes Bulgy to hit a tire, which launches Flower into the water tower. So, at least they're in character. Then in Digs and Discoveries, Minds of Mystery, a two-part special that advertises the pack, Stefano, the boat, crane, traction, tire, machine, brings the pack. Wait, who is this girl? Byron? But gender swap? Is, is Byron trans? Is Bren uh, oh, it's Brenda, a new character. The pack bonds with Gina over laughing at Thomas's expense. They refer to the pack as Jack and the Soder Construction Crew, which I guess is interesting. I like how Max and Monty feel bad about accidentally sending Thomas on the wrong line, which leads him to finding the lost engine. Also, Brenda was there. I'm glad they were all in character, and they helped with some construction, 
but they really didn't add that much to the story. In Out of Sight, we get a Brenda-focused story. We also get the return of Miss Jenny. Oh my gosh, it felt so weird without her. I'm so glad she's back. Miss Jenny is honestly done really well. Her design is also really good. Finally, it's back to how it should be. In the episode, Brenda leveled the foundation, but Max and Monty and others have to drive on it. Max and Monty are being jerks as usual, and when Jack puts stone on the foundation, she blames Max and Monty for it. She then moves the stone, and everyone's confused where it went, and then she's told it wasn't Max and Monty, and she apologizes to everyone. Yippee! Brenda doesn't feel like a pack character. She's just a generic, nice character. But I do like how she's a perfectionist. It gives her one thing to her, but really, I don't really like her that much. The next pack episode is First Day on Sodor. This is where Darcy shows up. I can't be the only one that was surprised to learn that Darcy is actually based off a real life vehicle and not an original design made for the show. Like, look at this. This is real life Darcy. But for the fictional Darcy, she is like Brenda, just there. I mean, we all know she can never live up to the legendary Stefano. If I had my way, Stefano would replace the entire pack in Railway and do everything for everyone. But since I can't, Darcy is what we got. Nia picks up Darcy and while she is talking, she almost hits James. She also almost hit Cranky and Max with Monty behind him. <laughs> pretty bored watching this until I realized that Darcy's first day is basically replicating what they did for Jack. Nia is the engine Darcy knows, like how Jack knew Thomas, and they both make mistakes on their first day. The difference is that Darcy doesn't stand out, unlike Jack who does stand out, and Darcy is just boring while Jack is really entertaining. For the pack in this episode, I like how Max and Monty took an immediate disliking towards her, and Oliver and Alfie get their shovel swapped for jackhammer things. I, I, I don't know what they're called, but I appreciated that they're finally switching up their tools again. Now for the pack's final appearance in the entire franchise. In Deep Trouble, we now have all the new characters already established, so we can finally move on from that awkward introduction and get into the interactions. So this episode is another Max and Monty episode. Really? Another Max and Monty episode? We already had one of those. Miss Jenny tells them to stay in the safety flags, but they get bored going in such cramped spaces. Darcy warns them about going out of bounds, and they just make fun of her. Hey, how would you know? I'm a tunnel boring machine. Exactly. You're boring. <laughs> they then go out of bounds, and Monty falls through the ground because he was too heavy. So Darcy has to dig a tunnel and save Monty and they both apologize, and oh yeah, Brenda was there. I'm surprised that the pack has remained pretty much good in every era they've been in. With Big Road Big Adventures, it suffers from the bland new characters and really boring episodes, but the pack themselves are still in character and still really enjoyable. I was gonna cover some of the magazines, but there's just not too much to the magazines, honestly. They appear in two, so if people are curious about uh, the pack through the magazines, it is, it's really nothing. That is the pack throughout the entire franchise, besides merchandise, of course. I want to give a quick shout out to Tringai and Scared Henry for helping with lines in filming, and also Tex Films for helping with a single line of a character that talked to Oliver. Thank you all for your help with this video. I appreciate it. Thank you all for watching this. If Mattel makes the pack bad one day, uh, don't be surprised if there is a pipe bomb in their mail. All right, Jack, I've returned. It's been, well, a little over five hours. I hope you don't mind that. But, uh, wait, who, who, you're so ugly. Like, you're calling Jack ugly? Have you looked in the mirror recently? I mean, not to say that Jack's much better, but bro, you really had to glow down. I'm out of here.